Welcome back. We got an inverse Laplace transform problem that's going to go on for days and days and days. About three pages. Probably only about a half an hour. Anyway, so you're given this uh, this frequency domain expression. So this problem just builds on the last problem that we just solved. And uh, the video that's right before this. So I'm just gonna write down the answers for those from that, uh, from that thing. And, you know, just to have a good starting point. But it's the same answers from that thing. So you're given this V's zero frequency domain expression for um, you know, for uh, for big V zero, you know the the the, vo the voltage uh, in uh, Laplace domain, and then you're given this uh, current through the cap I in Laplace domain expression that we solve for. It's S little s i d c um, the same root. So that's the stuff we 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 started with, and then. Just to just to have a good um, review of of, of um, what's going on. This was the circuit, but now you're given volt. You're given uh, constant values. So this is that I, IDC, and it has it's three milliamps. You're told that it's three milliamps, and then there's a switch that opens. It's the same circuit from the last problem, uh, but you're given that this is 2.5 Henry's, and you're given that this is this resistor is four kilo ohms, and uh, you're given that this cap is 25 microfarad, and um, this this is where I zero is in time domain, and this across these two across all th three of these elements, but you know written out here is this V zero time domain expression. So this is just where we came from from the previous problem. And you're asked to find the time domain signal actually isolated here, right? The problem before that, we couldn't pull this v little v0 out of the integral differential equation, right? It was just wrapped up in there. You can't do it. But um, this now we can. And likewise, solve for this dude in time domain, the little, little i0, the current through the cap. And then uh, they're asking, does I0 of T make sense? The answer is, of course it does. Okay, so strategy, all right, strategy. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to plug in the RLC constants. Okay, and... Then we're stuck with those constants. We can't change them. So we have to, we'll end up with an algebraic expression that we'll have to use partial fraction expansion to tease apart, right? And then we'll have to solve for the k's, solve for the constants in the partial fraction expansion. And then we can, once we have that, then we can transform back to time domain. Okay, it's gonna be, it's kind of fun. All right, so let's see. So we're gonna plug in, plug in the RLC, plug in the RLC values. Okay, so we need to get that stuff. So one over RC is one over 4,025 nanofarads. Nano, micro, nano, nano. It's minus nine nano. The nanofarad. This is uh, 10,000. Okay, then 1 over LC is 1 over uh, 2.5, just plain old 2.5, 25 times 10 to the minus, that's nanofarads, 16 times 10 to the 6. And then this IDC over C is is a constant value as well. 
the, the step function does turn it on and off, but IDC is constant. So this is 3 times 10 to the minus 3 over same 25. So this is 120,000. All right, then we can plug this stuff into V0, which is up here. So, uh, so V0 of S is 120,000. IDC over C is 120,000, and then S squared plus 10,000 S, 1 over RC, and plus 1 over LC, uh, 16 times 10 to the 6. That's a uh, proper rational function. It's a ratio of two expressions, and the denominator has a power of two. So it's OK, although all our problems are going to be OK. But we can, we can pull this thing apart. Okay? So it that's why they, when they say it only works for these, these values of R. We can't change them. Once it's in here, then, you know. You're stuck with that, but uh, we can we can pull this apart. So we need to find the we need to find the roots. So uh, that's the first thing you need to do is find the roots. So there's this um, there's this thing. Is this a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero? That's a you know the quadratic, and the version that's kind of handy is this thing x x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus root b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. So, um, so s is minus 10,000 over 2 uh, plus or minus 10,000 squared over 4 minus 16 times 10 to the 6 root over all that junk. So this is minus 5,000 plus or minus 3,000. All this stuff in the root ends up being 3,000. So this is, the roots are minus 2,000 and minus 8,000. Okay, these are real and distinct roots. We heard that term back in chapter 9, but um, anyway, so the way that you do the partial fraction expansion depends on, on, on the nature of the roots. We're not going to get into this super hardcore, but um, if we were going to solve all the variations, then there's then there be aware be aware there are variations in the in the partial fraction expansion method. So we can do uh, we can do a partial fraction expansion now. Okay, so uh, so plugging yeah, so this guy here, so plugging that back in, so. Uh, V big V zero of S is one hundred and twenty thousand over our our frac our factored quadratic on the bottom is S squared plus two thousand and uh, oh not S squared just S S plus two thousand and S plus eight thousand so our roots are minus two thousand and, and minus eight thousand so uh, this thing here we so we want to expand this into partial fractions because. Because if we had partial fractions, we could go back to the time domain. So uh, this is the method. You break up the the bottom guy's stuff like this. You build these partial fractions of, of the denominator uh, uh, little pieces here. And then you um, you solve for, for each of these constants, k1. So uh, so here we're going to solve for k1. Okay, so the way you do that is you multiply through times the denominator of k1. So, um, so you get um, move it over a little, 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 little bit here. So 120,000. We get too many zeros. 120,000. You multiply times s plus 2,000. 
Okay, s plus 2,000. So the, the, the bottom is s plus 2,000 and s plus 8,000. That's equi or the identity is equal to, it's really an identity symbol, k1. It just ends up being k1, but if you want to see all the steps, if, since you're multiplying through times 2,000, okay, or s plus 2,000, k2 s plus 2,000 over s plus 8,000. So you're multiplying the whole thing through by the denominator of k1. Then these are equal, so they cancel, these two terms. Uh, these two terms are, are uh, the same, so they cancel. Then what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate the, expre the expression at the root. Uh, so evaluate equals s minus 2,000. And likewise, you'll do that. You'll do that here at s equals minus 2,000. That means this term will become 0. In effect, it's just k1 equals these, this stuff here. So, uh, so basically, you end up with 120,000 over uh, mm, min, you plug in minus 2,000, minus 2,000 plus 2,000. or 8,000 rather, uh, is going to be equal to K1. So K1 is going to be, it ends up being 20. This is um, 6,000, 120,000 over 6,000 is 20. That's K1. And then solve for for K2 similarly. So multiply to solve for K2, you take this one here, you multiply through times the denominator of the K2 term. So, um, and then you evaluate each one of these terms at s equals minus 8,000. So, let's see, I guess I'll show up, I'll show all the steps. So, uh, it's 120,000. You multiply times s plus 8,000. And then, um, this was it's on the denominator, s plus 2,000 and s plus 8,000. Then, uh, this is equivalent to k1 over s plus 2,000. And what we're doing is we're multiplying through times the denominator s of uh, the k2 term, s plus 8,000. Then um, k2 over s plus 8,000. s plus 8,000. So these two terms are e equal, so they, uh, they cancel. Um, these two terms are equal, they cancel. And then you evaluate this at s equals minus 8,000. And um, these two are, uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, you evaluate this one as s equals minus 8,000. And then, you, so you, when you plug in the minus 8,000 up here, this term, this term becomes zero. So the k1 goes away, and you just, you just end up with 120,000 uh, s plus 2,000. You know, evaluate it at s equals minus eight thousand. You equals k two, and you plug uh, this k two. You plug this in here. You're going to get k two is um, is minus twenty, right? So that was that's the method, and that's why you're locked into these constants here. You um, you solve for these constants, and then you end up with this. Um, Rational, rational function, and you're, it only works for the, these constant values. And you have, you know, once you factor it, there's no way you're going to get un, you're going to get un, you're going to make it work for any other R, L, C values. Anywho, so um, so plug these, plug in the k's back to our uh, into our our v zero partial fraction expansion, right? Uh, so uh, where is that? So v0 of s, uh, this thing here, right? We're plugging the k's back in there. This thing is is 20 over s plus 2,000 minus 20 over s plus 8,000. The only the other thing you could do is check that this this thing actually produces the same answers as this thing. It just it needs to because it's a you know identity here. 
you need to check different values of s to make sure that it works but uh, you know it does so we can go back to to time domain now we can do inverse laplace and uh, pulling these out of the table where is my Where's my rule? The rule that I'm using here, f of t in the table and f of s is this e to the minus a t time domain is one over s plus a. This is the rule. So um, then, so now we're back to time domain, right? This j just becomes little v zero, and, and this is uh, you factor well the twenty is just constant, and then you have one over s plus uh, two thousand. So a is it's 2,000, so it's e to the minus 2,000 t, and minus 20 e to the minus 8,000 t. Voila, and then uh, u of, um, there's our buddy u of t, because, because, well, the switch, right? This happens to be both, so this is the switch. This u of t kind of bugs me a little bit, like sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not there. But anyway, isn't that cool? So we were, if you remember the previous problem, we were all wrapped up. We couldn't get v, little v0 isolated, but now, you know, we can pull it out now. It's kind of cool. So what's the next step on this thing? What are we trying to do here? Oh, so that was, um, that was little v0 of t. We need to find i0 of t. Well, we're given this. We're given this i0 of s expression. So um, this was, this was the answer to part A answer, this guy, and then the part B solution. So part B, we're given, I'll just rewrite it, we're given this I0, um, I0 uh, of S is S times IDC over the same root, S squared, plus s one over rc plus one over lc. So we're given that, that came from the problem before this where we derived that. So this is s and three milliamps. Um, and then the same factored root s plus 2000 and s plus 8000. Okay, so if we do a um, partial fraction expansion, I like to call it PFE on this thing. We'll have a form that can go back to the time domain. So for K1, uh, we're going to um, multiply times S plus 2000. So um, So uh, we're going to par pull this apart into a partial fraction. So this is s times uh, three. Let's see. So s plus two thousand. Um, K one. You know, I'm just going to do a shorthand because the other two terms end up dropping out because of the evaluation condition and the uh, expression cancellation. This ends up just being this stuff here evaluated at s equals minus two thousand. And K1, I'm going to take a couple of little shorty cuts here. Um, well, this, wait a minute. This guy here is going to, one of these is going to go away. Uh, this one's going to go away right here. Yeah, and this guy ends up being minus 0 0.001. Okay, and then for K2, we're going to multiply times s, multiply uh, the partial fraction expansion of this through times um, s plus 8,000. So now I'm, now, I, now I'm thinking I shouldn't have skipped any steps. Let me go ahead and uh, unskip a step. So that's this thing. This thing, you set it up to be K1 over S plus 2000, which we already solved for the K1 thing, but just to be more 
less sk skipping steps. This is s plus 8,000. And you multiply through times uh, the denominator of k2, so this becomes s plus 8,000. And these cancel because they're equal, so you just end up with the k2. And then here you do s plus 8,000. And those two cancel because they're equal. And then you do here you do s plus 8,000. And this guy becomes zero when you evaluate this term at s equals minus 8,000. So really, it's just, that's what I did up here, but I skipped steps. But here, uh, you, end up with, the end, you end up with just k2 equals this stuff over here, evaluated at s equals uh, minus 8,000. So you, you end up, um, if you plug in the 8,000 in here, you end up with... Uh, you end up with um, here. You end up with the minus eight thousand times three times ten to the minus three over minus eight thousand plus two thousand. That's going to be k two, and it is equal to. Let me just check. Am I doing this right here? Yeah, that's good. So this is 0 0.004. Okay, then we can we can we can plug the the k values um, you know, back into i uh, zero. So i uh, so i i zero of s is 0 0.0001 over s plus 2,000. The uh, the partial the partial fraction expansion of this thing here we solve for the k's and then we plug those k's back into the partial fraction expansion plus 0 0.0004 over s plus 8,000. And then we can go um, back to time domain. Okay, so um, I little i zero of t is you pull out the well this thing here. Um, where's the rule for that thing? It's the same. It's the same rule that we used. It's the same rule before. Where uh, this one? It's this thing. It's just s plus a. So it's uh, zero point zero zero one um, e to the minus two thousand t plus 0 0.00, I have too many zeros, 0, 0, 004, e to the minus 8,000, t. you got to put a u of t on there because of the switch. This happens to be work out to be amps. If you kept track of all of that through there, it would be amps. And um, yeah, that's I0 of t. That's the answer to b. Okay, the part c, they're asking... Does this does this make sense? Somewhere around there they ask that. I don't know where that page is. Somewhere they ask, um, does I zero of t make sense in terms of known circuit behavior? And well, what exactly is, is even happening here? I zero, if you plotted um, if you plotted this, it's um, it's u of t, so it's zero before it's zero. So let's see, this is i of zero versus t. It's a zero before t because of the u of t thing. Then it, it jumps up to um, it jumps up to three milliamps. When these are both, the e terms are both one, so you get, um, it's a negative. There's a negative in here. Negative. Anyway, it jumps up to three. Then it it does this. That's what that guy does. And then v zero, which is over here. Uh, this one here is uh, the e terms are um, one at zero, so you just get twenty minus twenty. So plot that thing. There's v. It does. It starts at there. 
and it's we built it's zero before zero because of the U of T. <clears throat> and um it's not obvious what this looks like, but I took the time to plot it and it looks like that. And it kinda just before ten does that. So there's our original circuit here. So this is a parallel RLC circuit, so the voltage across all three of these guys is zero at on both sides of t equals zero it's zero right uh zero so um so v zero at zero is zero therefore um you know from ohm's law um i in the resistor at zero is zero and we're it's also given that that I L at zero is zero because these are um, because this I think you were told there's no energy in this thing but even if you weren't because of this so there's no so right at zero there's no current in the resistor and there's no current in the uh, in the inductor so all the current from the from the source here when the switch opens has to go somewhere. It can't can't go through the uh, through the resistor because the voltage is still zero at that instant in time. The voltage is still zero, so they, you can't have any current through here because of Ohm's law. And it can't go it can't go through here because you can't have a step change in current in an inductor. So the only place for the current to go is the uh, the capacitor, and so that's why the current in the capacitor I sub zero steps up from zero to 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 um, to three milliamps. And um, so, therefore, all initial um, current when switch opens, you know, must go through the cap, which is what this is saying. So, yes, it makes sense. All right.